Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Nick Scherf. I'm the Communications Director at the Center for Applied Linguistics. Thank you for joining us for this 30-minute webinar in our Critical Conversations Research to Policy series. This year's theme is Technologically Mediated Learning in Multilingual Contexts, and we are excited to be back. We are examining the impact of technological innovation on learning in multilingual settings with a particular focus on AI. Today's webinar is Teaching Multilingual Learners with Generative AI Affordances, Limitations, and Policy Implications. And we will be speaking with Kevin Donnelly from Georgetown University. I am joined by Cal board member Esther DeJong of the, of the University of Colorado, Cal's director of PK-12 to Language and Literacy, Kia Johnson, and Cal Communications Coordinator, Althea Rowe. We are recording this webinar and will post the recording on cal.org after the event. Before we begin, please mute your microphone to avoid interruptions. You can activate closed captioning by pressing the closed caption button at the bottom of your screen. The Center for Applied Linguistics is providing this event as a public service. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed belong solely to the speakers and do not necessarily represent the views of the Center for Applied Linguistics. Our panel comprises esteemed experts who work at the intersection of research, policy, and practice in language education, language access, and equity. You can learn more about them on the webinar's cal.org webpage. We encourage you to ask questions via the Q&A box throughout the call. We will answer as many as possible at the end of our discussion. This is an excellent opportunity to tap into the wealth of knowledge we are fortunate to have here today. Also, click the chat button at the bottom of your screen to share your thoughts and comments anytime. Try it out now by letting us know where you're listening from today. I'll go ahead and pass the microphone now over to our facilitators. Esther? Thanks, Nick. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm sure everybody's coming from many different places. Um, we have learned that 30 minutes is very short, so we're going to get started right away. Um, Kevin, welcome. Um, so glad that you're here to share your expertise on generative um, AI. And so let's start with the research part of this. Um, based on your research and your expertise, um, tell us a little bit more about that and how does it affect multilingual learners? Yes, hello, yes. thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and talk about some of my work, uh, about how we as educators can respond to the linguistic realities of our multilingual learners, how technology may help us to do so, and some of the policy implications that we should consider. Uh, I'll talk about some of the details from my research and the ways that we're documenting how teachers use AI tools, particularly ChatGPT, uh, to expand the possibility for teachers to engage multilingual learners with the entirety of their communicative repertoires. Uh, but before I jump into some of those details, I think it'll be helpful to describe the larger context in which some of my research happens and why I'm interested in this topic in the first place. Um, I'm currently a postdoctoral fellow at Georgetown University, and I'm supporting a U.S. Department of Education grant called Project Elect. And this grant uh, specifically supports the training of teachers of multilingual learners here in Washington, D.C. This is a national professional development grant uh, through the Office of English Language Acquisition. And through it, we train pre-service and in-service in teachers in what we refer to as culturally and linguistically responsive pedagogies. And briefly by that, by CLRP, uh, we mean those instructional practices that draw on culturally relevant curricula that embrace students' full communicative repertoires or something in line with the translanguaging stance to pedagogy, that disrupt deficit-based perspectives of multilingual learners and their communicative practices, and most importantly, to put this critique into practical action or to find ways to practice critical consciousness in teaching and learning. So as part of our grant work, we research the ways that teachers understand and implement CLRP, uh, to do so, we observe teachers in their classrooms and we conduct small teacher-led research projects in which teachers themselves explore new or innovative ways to work with multilingual learners in each of their classroom contexts. So this is where AI comes into the conversation for me because in especially our PD work, many teachers that we work with have expressed interest, concerns, and questions about AI uh, during our sessions. In the classroom observations, I've seen numerous ways that teachers use AI in their instruction uh, in both spontaneous and planned ways. Other teachers who we work with have taken advantage of those teacher-led research projects to experiment with AI tools, 
observe their uses and impact, collect some, some kind of data or information on the effectiveness of their pedagogical uses of these tools. And then most importantly, to reflect critically on how these tools impact their own teaching practices. So as part of our research, I've documented teachers' intentional uses of AI in about eight of the 40 total observations that we've conducted. And in the teacher-led research projects, about 10% of teachers have conducted some kind of study focused on using AI tools in their classroom. And some of the preliminary findings that we've found, uh, I've worked with teachers at both elementary and secondary levels, and it's pretty different in the ways that each of those groups of teachers engage AI tools. I found that elementary or primary school teachers primarily use ChatGPT or other AI tools to scaffold students' abilities to comprehend and interpret texts. For example, they may use AI to generate video subtitles, uh, to translate text or differentiate the reading levels of the text that they provide students, uh, and also to create content area exemplar texts or text that model specific disciplinary literacy practices for their multilingual learners. On the other hand, with the secondary teachers that I've worked with, I've found examples of how they intentionally modeled or scaffolded students' uses of ChatGPT, uh, not just to use it in their own planning or instruction or to prepare materials like elementary school teachers did, but rather to use AI to support multilingual learners' ability to produce and revise text, not just to comprehend and interpret text. And there have been a couple interesting ways that secondary teachers have done this that I'd like to share. One of those is by creating ChatGPT prompting frames. Uh, so if you've used ChatGPT, you realize you know that you have to insert a prompt or provide the tool with a prompt to get it to follow the instructions that you would like it to follow. And much like teachers would provide multilingual learners with maybe sentence starters or paragraph frames to support their writing process and product, Rather, these teachers are providing prompting supports or prompting frames to students to give structure in detail to the prompts that they provide ChatGPT to make the overall product, product that they use it for more accurate and more effective to their desired uses. One of the examples of these frames that I'd like to share, one teacher came up with one called IDEA, I-D-E-A, in which you describe, describe the main idea or the general idea of the task, provide specific details about the task, offer multiple examples of the desired outcomes and describe specific actions that you want the tool to take. And multilingual learners would use this frame to write out a much more detailed or comprehensive prompt than they may do so without that kind of scaffolding or intentional modeling on behalf of the teacher. And what I like about this example is it is a Spanish English cognate that teachers in uh, Spanish English dual language programs are using with their students. And as part of this research, another secondary teacher is currently conducting one of their teacher-led research studies looking specifically at how ChatGPT's image generator, which is called DALI, can be used to support multimodal literacy practices. Uh, and they're specifically asking students to create text descriptions uh, used to generate images through the tool and experiment with how different levels of text or going back and continually adding detail to their textual writing impacts the production and the detail of the images that they create. And teachers have talked about this as a way to support multilingual learners' descriptive language or visual, visual literacy skills. So those are some of the preliminary findings that I found. And when I think about what these findings mean generally, I think it demonstrates the affordan that the affordances of AI are pretty clear when it comes to linguistically responsive pedagogy, or maybe embracing translanguaging more easily and to support multilingual learners' agency uh, to more fully participate regardless of their communicative repertoires. But I think there are persisting questions about the affordances and limitations of these tools, especially in terms of culturally responsive pedagogy or disrupting some of those biases and practicing critical consciousness and what this might look like with the use of this technology. So this is where I think some of the important policy considerations start to come into the conversation as well. Uh, we not only need a clear understanding of how these tools work in classroom settings, but we also need concrete ethical guidelines for its pedagogical and academic uses as well. And when we do so, it's important to bring teachers' voices into the conversation, to bring their multilingual realities to the table. I think we need folks who think about language and languages from critical perspectives when creating this technology. Uh, we need these voices when answering questions like how to combat monolingual biases in chat GPT or how to combat harmful language ideologies. What about questions like, can AI work translingually? And if it does, what does this look like? Or if it does not work translingually, what are the limitations of that fact? When we bring multilingual people and multilingual teachers to the table, uh, they're gonna help solve, answer some of these questions and provide clarification on the uses of some of these tools. 
as they're being developed, trained, and implemented. And I think this because people who live multilingually cannot see life outside of that multilingual lens, and especially teachers who share similar lived experiences and linguistic realities with their multilingual learners, I think they have a better understanding of how those students engage socially, academically, and emotionally in the classroom. Uh, I think that's an important bridge to the linguistic, from the linguistic to the cultural responsiveness gap that I think exists in terms of AI and its pedagogical applications. And I'll save some of the more specific policy implications for later in the discussion. Thank you so much, Kevin. That's actually a great segue um, into our next question. Um, so as you remember, this year we're exploring topics that we have um, developed four categories of access, representation, systems, and structures as it regards to technological innovations in multilingual learner context. So when you think about the work that you're doing, which of these categories do you think today's topic fits the best? And can you give us some examples of why you think that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I, when I think about that, I think my work is most directly related to questions of access. Uh, I'm concerned about this issue of access because I think it's the foundation of agency for both students and teachers. In my work, I embrace a translanguaging lens in both my teaching and my research, and a foundational dimension of a translanguaging lens is to embrace a co-learner relationship uh, between teachers and students, or to find ways to position students, especially multilingual learners, as experts and as co-teachers or as equal collaborators in their learning experiences. So for me, this issue of maximizing student agency is key, is, an, is a very important consideration. And when we think about access and agency for multilingual learners, we should seek to democratize the availability and the utility of tools that scaffold their access and agency or that expand and maximize their access and agency. And I think there are affordances with artificial intelligence, kind of like some of the findings I shared in the first question, that point to how these technologies would maximize multilingual learners agency in the classroom and students from all diver a diversity of linguistic backgrounds. Uh, so in other words, I think we need to think critically about who does or who does not have access to technologies for language learning and use. I'm interested in AI and working with multilingual learners in this intersection because I think it drastically provokes the question of who can have access to academic spaces now that these technologies exist. I think this is where teacher agency and access also comes into play and is an important consideration. Um, I think now as teachers, if we approach this tool from a frame of rather than saving time or cutting our workload, but with a little bit of extra effort, we as educators and multilingual learners can learn how to implement, model, and scaffold the use of these tools that will drastically change the way that we can make our classrooms more multilingual or translingual, if you will, and how we can engage multilingual learners in the entirety of their communicative repertoire. Uh, I think with the use of these tools, we can pretty quickly deconstruct some of the language barriers that have long excluded or marginalized multilingual learners from main mainstream classroom settings and have restricted their access to learning experiences outside of remedial programming. Uh, in this question of agency for teachers as well, I think we are increasingly faced with linguistically diverse classrooms in which students and teachers don't share the same communicative repertoire. This is be becoming an increasingly true reality. This also serves as a barrier for us as teachers that restricts our agency to best support our multilingual learners and how do we navigate that? I think about my own teaching experiences and why this issue of AI is important to me. I was previously a high school history teacher in a Spanish English dual language program and I speak both languages. So in that setting, I've always felt comfortable with my ability to create a translanguage in classroom space with my students or to engage the flexibility and the diversity of their communicative repertoires. However, in the past couple of years that I've been at Georgetown, I've been teaching students whose communicative repertoires includes much more than Spanish, such as Turkish, Russian, Korean, Amharic, Brazilian, Portuguese, Shona, and many other languages. And all of a sudden, I found myself in a position that was challenging to navigate. I was supposed to teach folks about how to practice linguistically responsive pedagogy, but was also struggling myself to do the same with my students in that setting. And I, I didn't really have a clear step forward as to how to engage students on their in their linguistic repertoires in which I did not share. Uh, so when I was exploring AI and ChatGPT, I quickly found its utility uh, and found ways to engage my students as co-learners in that sense, to maximize their translingual access to the content of my classes, 
uh, to expand my own access as a teacher to resources that make my instructional practices more linguistically responsive as well. Because I think access is not about preserving the same student teacher hierarchical relationship or power balance. Access is about maximizing the agency of our students to collaboratively engage us and participate as co-learners. This is an important aspect of a translanguaging stance to curriculum and instruction as well. So I think that the research I described earlier points to some important questions related to access as well that I'm sure we'll touch on throughout the rest of this conversation. Like what policies are necessary to ensure that tools like AI and ChatGPT are effectively integrated into education for multilingual learners? Or how can we ensure that tools, these tools address linguistic diversity and particularly linguistic diversity for indigenous or endangered communities and or speakers of endangered languages or language revitalization programs or intercultural bilingual education programs, for example. And then also what questions do we need to consider in terms of the particular uses of these technologies for specific student populations like duly identified multilingual learners or multilingual learners who engage in spoken and signed languages rather than just spoken languages multilingual gifted students or newcomers or refugee years students or stu students with limited or interrupted formal education as well. I think our uses of these tools can and should be tailored specifically to each of these groups. And that's something else that we have to explore along the issue of access. Thanks so much for that, Kevin. And at some point, we're going to also ask you, of course, to say, what are some of the dangers of, of all of this, right? Because there's always two sides. But before we go in that way, in order to maybe avoid the pitfalls that may also come with generative AI, what policies do we need in order to ensure that this generative AI actually works to support linguistically and culturally support sustaining pedagogies? as opposed to endangering it? And, and what kind of policies and practices do we need in order to kind of, like you said, kind of support that agency um, for both teachers and for students? Tell us a little bit about kind of where your ideas are going in terms of policy. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I think that's been a, a difficult bridge to gap sometimes, that practice to policy conversation, especially when it comes to AI. And because my work is so closely focused on teachers and teacher practices, I'm constantly trying to find ways to bring teachers' voices to these conversations. And in reflecting on this question, uh, I shared earlier about how this work stems from a larger research project funded by the U.S. Department of Education. So I've thought about what would I say to the Office of English Language Acquisition about the changes that I would like to see in policy and practice if I had the opportunity to do so. And when it comes to the affordances and the limitations or the concerns of AI, here are some of these concerns that I might share. I think first we need more professional development and professional development that is particularly focused on critical engagements with AI and determining the best pedagogical practices in that sense. Uh, I think teachers desire, need and deserve focused and intentional PD around the uses of AI, not just focused on how the tools work or awareness of how students may use them in the classroom, uh, but PD that should start from the view that we as teachers, if we learn how to use these tools appropriately and effectively, we can engage multilingual learners in ways that previously were not possible. I think more importantly, we need to turn to questions of what it looks like to combat monolingual biases and language ideologies in chat GPT, or what it looks like to work translingually with these technologies as well. So PD should be developed and funded that particular particularly prepares teachers to explore and respond to the concerns about culturally responsive pedagogies and how AI might support that. I think this leads to two other important policy considerations. One is that most of this technology currently sits behind a paywall for a lot of teachers. So we need funding that maximizes teachers' access to these resources as well. For example, there are tools that offer the possibility of instantaneous video caption transcription or subtitling live audio dub dubbing and interpretation, video and photo generation, which can support multimodal access to language and content as well. But almost all of these tools, the pre premier premium versions are behind paywalls for teachers. So we need to fund their access to these tools if we're going to be able to learn how they work and how to effectively prepare teachers to use them in the classroom, if it's going to be a focus of PD, so to say. Only then can we facilitate students' appropriate and effective uses of those tools as well and maximize its potential affordances for multilingual learners. And then I think the other policy consideration to take into account is the need for pedagogical guidelines and ethical guidelines around the uses of AI in the classroom. I think these guidelines need to emphasize cultural and linguistically responsive approaches to pedagogy. They need to ensure that 
uh, the use and the supports that these tools provide actually enhance our pedagogies rather than serve as mere technological add-ons or, or tools in a toolbox that we may use. Uh, this is a new and ongoing conversation in higher education specif specifically in terms of the kinds of policies and guidelines that are given to students uh, beyond just concerns about plagiarism and how to avoid plagiarism with using this tool. I think our conversation needs to be wider than that. And when setting these guidelines, we need to consider questions like, to what extent is AI content accurate? And how can we test or assess the accuracy of AI generated content? Um, are there other credible sources that exist outside of gener generative AI that can validate its content as well? If that remains particularly a human practice, how do we prepare teachers and students to do that? Who is represented in the content? Uh, is it inclusive in its scope and the perspectives that it presents? And then what are some of those privacy considerations that teachers and students must know or safeguard against? Um, like I said earlier, we must include the voices of the people who live and teach translingually when discussing these questions and creating policy guidelines. And then finally, I think in the bigger picture, one more consideration is that we need to expand access for teachers' uses of AI, whether through PD or funding their, funding their access to tools, to do so, it's going to be important to incorporate AI literacy into teacher education and teacher preparation. So as part of the umbrella of digital literacy, uh, we should consider AI literacy to soon become an important component of the professional knowledge base of teaching and especially teaching multilingual learners. So in addition to those ethical guidelines, I think we need to develop concrete criteria, standards, and assessment practices of AI and its pedagogical uses in teacher education programs as well. Excellent, Kevin. It sounds like you've got a little bit in there that leads into my next question because you've, you've got your policy recommendations there. So can you then connect that to, to any calls of actions you may have that our audience can, um, can do or participate in to also support this work? Yes, absolutely. Thinking about this first from the perspective of educators and teachers, I shared earlier about how our research project and Project Elect supports teacher-led research in classroom circumstances. Uh, one thing I would like for folks to take away from this, and one thing that I would urge educators to do, is to see this as an opportunity to take on some of these questions through your own teacher-led research initiatives or practices as well. Find ways in your classroom practice to investigate and reflect on how AI can support your linguistically responsive pedagogy with multilingual learners, Experiment with its uses in your own classroom context and with your students as well. Uh, find ways, even if they're just small ways in your regular classroom practice, to continually integrate and assess the impact of AI tools on teaching and your students' learning. Find ways to critically reflect on how these technologies can be better integrated or identify any gaps for improvement. Uh, I think when we think about transformative changes in education and especially in teaching in ways that we can meet multilingual learners, these, educate, these changes often take form of grassroots movements led by teachers in their classroom context who have the space and the agency to innovate. So if you do have that space for agency, take advantage of it and, and find ways to experiment and explore with AI uses in your classroom. And to facilitate this, uh, I believe you'll be able to find a list of resources, an annotated list of resources related to AI issues of equity for multilingual learners and its connection to translanguaging pedagogies. Those should be linked on the website's webinar description page at some point. And then I've also thought about a quick call to action for policymakers and other stakeholders as well. And I think it's important to very quickly work towards developing these ethical guidelines for, for it, the equitable use and the reasonable and rational use of AI in educational settings. Um, there's a resource from the Center for Teaching and Innovation at Cornell University. They wrote up a blog post or an article about ethical AI and teaching and learning. And this should also be linked to the webinar's description page on the website. And I think this is a helpful resource to at least start the conversation about ethical guidelines. Uh, it includes additional resources to learn about how these tools work and what some of those concerns may be, whether they're concerns about ethical uses, privacy concerns, or how data is used in student evaluation. And finally, when we're having these conversations about how to advise and prepare teachers to navigate AI in their classrooms uh, and in their instructional practices, we must be, bring translingualism and multilingual folks to the table to have those conversations. So I, I urge policymakers and stakeholders to find ways to integrate those voices into the conversation. 
I think we're all now ready to 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 act, Kevin. This is this is <laughs> wonderful, and we have a lot of comments in the chat that says we need to we need you longer, um, so that we can hear more examples of the kinds of things that you're seeing and the kinds of things that you're doing. And thank you so much for sharing those those resources. We have a few minutes left for some Q and A, and the questions are challenging questions in terms of how do we do this, how do we recognize disadvantages, but. One thing that um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about, Kevin, is so we talked, you talked a lot about translanguaging and translanguaging spaces. So this may be the more linguistic aspect of uh, responsive teaching. Can you give an example how the cultural part plays a role too when you think about generative AI culturally um, sustaining pedagogies? And um, what does that look like? What's is maybe an example of a classroom activity? I think one way to think about this from the way teachers may use it into their classroom practices is part of culturally responsive pedagogy is to find ways to make the content and curricula of classroom instruction relevant or responsive to students' identities, their lived histories, their family experiences in the communities that they come from. I think ChatGPT can serve as a useful resource for teachers to not just translate content back and forth or to make content translingual or to navigate the linguistic flexibility of content, but rather to brainstorm potential cultural connections that they might make. So as we use ChatGPT as teachers and we provided information, we can, while we're prompting it, provide the tool with information about student profiles from our classrooms, what some of their background information that we learn as teachers of multilingual learners about our students, considering that one of the first steps of teaching multilingual learners is to really deeply get to know their backgrounds, their linguistic identities, and their cultural identities, and to help brainstorm ways that we might work in topics or make bridge the relevance of content to what those lived histories that students may experience are, whether those are students from families that have experienced immigration, whether we know the specific geographic backgrounds that influence a student's family relationship, uh, or whether we might find ways to not just translate the content of text that we provide students, but to translate the cultural content of that text as well. Uh, keeping in mind that ChatGPT, I think, is a useful tool for brainstorming ideas and starting off that thinking, understanding that the product is always going to be limited in needs uh, critical revision and critical consideration from the very humans that are doing that. And that's one of the reasons why I believe that we should focus more strongly on how we as teachers can use it to facilitate our instruction with multilingual learners, considering that some of those concerns about how students may use it or what changes it may provoke for how we understand literacy and in, in academic literacy practices in the classroom as this tool becomes more commonly used. But I also think that continues to be a gap in this and a concern about the use of this technology in that it continues to produce a so so to say average output um, in terms of the content, even though it provides us with a lot of linguistic flexibility. Uh, so when it comes to issues of representation and how to disrupt some of those biases, I think it's clear how we need to disrupt linguistic biases, such as what may be considered wrong or broken or uneducated or improper or unacademic in terms of language practices, but we still need to explore ways to disrupt these biases and, and flood AI with content that disrupts the cultural biases along with the linguistic biases with students as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a great um, segue into some of the questions are also about like, what do we need to be aware of as teachers about the biases that, that do exist? The, if you will, the ideologies that are represented in generative AI. Do you have like two things that you're like, these are two things we, you definitely have to really be aware of when using um, generative AI when it comes to these biases? I think- advantages? I think one of the first biases that we bring to the table is what we considered standardized academic language. And if we're asking students to perform standard academic language as the outcome of, that, of literacy practices, then ChatGPT is going to be a very effective tool in producing that. But what we're essentially asking students to do is to conform to the average of those practices or the standardized version of those practices. And underlying those are ideologies about what is considered maybe a native 
version of a language or the most formal version of a language or what is considered to be competent in a language rather than linguistic practices that truly match the diverse and the flexible and the dynamic realities of multilingual folks. Uh, I don't think the technology is set up to work that way. The technology is set up to work very monolingually, even though it provides us access across languages. So that monolingual bias is very deeply inherent in the tool and, and its products continue to, I would say, reify or recenter the standard monolingual practices, regardless of the language that's being used for the tool. Wow, this has been a wonderful conversation, and I, I feel that this could go on for uh, a much longer time. Uh, we have reached the end of today's webinar, uh, and I just wanted to take a moment to uh, to thank our speaker, Kevin Donnelly, uh, and uh, we will be sharing some of the resources suggested uh, by our speaker, as well as additional Cal resources uh, that you might find helpful and we'll share that on our webinars webpage on cal.org. Um, so for now, I just wanted to thank our panel for their insightful conversation and our audience for their great questions and comments and enthusiasm. We are so happy to be back. Uh, please share what you've learned today with your colleagues and invite them to join our next webinar. Uh, you can visit www.cal.org for more resources to help you in your support of multilingual learners. And that concludes our discussion for today. We thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.